There are some days where you just come across something so unspeakably jaw-dropping that you begin to question the very fabric of reality. The day that I saw this advert was one of those days. Everybody's free to feel good. Feel good. Everybody's free to feel good. Feel good. Everybody's free. Everybody's free! At Arla Cravendale, all our cows are free to graze. Arla Foods is the UK's largest dairy supplier and the fifth largest dairy company in the world. And this atrocious advert is promoting their Cravendale milk line and apparently enhanced welfare scheme, which they're calling care, which I guess must be an acronym for cows are repeatedly exploited. Just think about the insidiousness of them using the word care for their welfare scheme. I mean, considering that animal farming is the biggest polluter of rivers in the UK, well, we already knew that dairy farms produce a lot of shit, but it turns out that the majority of it is actually coming out of the mouths of dairy farmers instead. Aside from being mind-blowingly cringy, this advert demonstrates the lows that this industry will stoop to to hide the truth from the public. Because, well, from start to finish, dairy products rely on taking away someone's freedom. So let's just consider what the typical life of an Arla dairy cow will look like. Well, firstly, of course, she will be born into the dairy industry and immediately a farmer will come in and separate her from her mother. She'll be placed in a solitary confinement hutch for up to eight weeks where she'll have no room to move around and will, of course, be unable to socialize. Once she is fertile, she will then be forcibly impregnated by the farmer who will force his arm inside her anus and then inject semen taken from a bull into her uterus. Once she then gives birth, well, the farmer will step in and take her baby away from her as well, and then milk her multiple times a day and repeat this process of forced impregnation and daily milking until her body is worn out and she physically cannot be milked for any more money by the farmer. At this point, she will then be taken to the slaughterhouse where she will have a blade pulled across her throat. But hey, not to worry because throughout all of this, well, she'll be allowed to graze if the weather allows. What a lucky cow. I bet you can't believe how free she is. And bear in mind, this is according to Arla's improved welfare standards. But of course, despite what their new advert would have you believe, not all Arla cows are even a part of this scheme. And actually, a Viva investigation recently revealed that while well, many Arla products are actually sourced from cows who live in intensive factory-style farms and actually have zero access to grazing at all. And so how did Arla respond to this expose? Well, interestingly, they said this. Within Arla, we have a variety of farming systems and do not believe that any one is better than the other. Oh, is that right? So you created an advert declaring that your cows are free because they get to graze, which you promoted as being a good thing, but actually you don't think that it's any better. So why then would you make an advert promoting something as being better if you don't actually think that it is any better? And if the cows outside are free, does that mean that the cows inside are not free? Which means that according to what you just said, being free is not actually better than not being free. They are literally basically admitting that this advert is just humane washing. They're basically saying that they thought that they could play a well-known song along with some footage of cows in green fields and farmers being oh so quirky and relatable. And doing so would actually distract people from the fact that dairy farming is in reality a morally disgusting industry. After all, how do you know when animal farmers are lying about protecting their animals? Well, they just open their mouths. Plus, on top of their standard practices being inherently exploitative, our suppliers have been exposed multiple times for neglect of their cows and actually violation of their own welfare guidelines. One study investigating non-compliance with welfare standards in Swedish dairy farms, which is the country where Arla originates from, found that 51%, yes, over half of Arla farms were actually violating their own welfare standards. 
Woods. Another investigation by Sweden's public broadcaster led to an Arla farmer being charged with animal cruelty after his dairy cows were found to be malnourished and living in mounds of their own excrement. Arla responded to this incident by saying they do not want to discuss a single individual in the media because the farmer is not a company. Ah, I see. So Arla is happy to promote their farmers when an idealized version of dairy farming is being depicted, but then at the same time will deny any responsibility for them when they're exposed for doing things that are illegal. How convenient. I guess the only ones who are free are the dairy farmers who are free to do whatever the hell they want to these cows and then get away with it. And this isn't just happening in Sweden. In the UK, another Viva investigation found limping and emaciated cows with untreated injuries and massively oversized and distorted udders at an Arla farm in Devon. But what about their new standards? Well, rather predictably, when you look underneath the surface, while well, they are of course totally meaningless. The new care scheme actually stands for Cooperative Animal Welfare Renewable Energy and Ecosystem Initiatives, which is a really convoluted way of saying absolutely nothing. Did they really think they could create a cute acronym and throw in some sustainability buzzwords to distract from the fact that dairy is one of the most environmentally damaging industries on the planet and that giving a cow a little bit of grass to eat while exploiting them does not amount to freedom? It's like the leader of a dogfighting ring claiming that dogfighting is moral because, well, check this, they have a new scheme called love, which stands for loving, overjoyed, and very ethical. Not convinced? Well, don't worry because the scheme means the dogs sometimes get to roam around in a yard with a stick. The new Arla scheme is just like in 2019 when Arla launched the equally deceitfully named Every Calf Has a Value, which meant that male and surplus dairy calves would no longer be shot and killed. Well, at least until they're eight weeks old. I mean, they don't have that much value. And why did they bring in this new scheme? Well, because it looks good in a headline. Oh, and also because of a small minor detail, which is that supermarkets were actually banning the practice, which kind of meant that Arla didn't really have much of a choice. But hey, at least this way, they get some positive press from implementing changes that they were being forced to to make. And also, isn't there a weird paradox here where Arla goes, look how great we are. We've just stopped shooting male calves before they're eight weeks old. Except you were also telling us that you were great and loved your cows when you were shooting the males before they were eight weeks old. So let me get this straight. You've always had the best interests of the animals. I mean, always, right? Except now you especially have the best interests of the animals because you've just banned this thing which you did for decades while also saying that you always had the best interests of the animals. So I guess either shooting male calves was absolutely fine or it was an awful practice, which of course would mean that you didn't actually have the best interests of the animals at heart and that you have lied to us for decades. Hmm, I wonder which way it is. Oh, and by the way, the cherry on top is now that dairy farmers can sell the calves to calf brokers instead, who have been documented sending newborn babies to slaughterhouses. But hey, at least they're not shooting them on the farm anymore. So why does Arla keep telling us that they care when they prove time and time again that they don't? Well, as Arla's agriculture director at the time, Alice Swift said, we can't afford to give consumers an excuse not to consume dairy. And that is the crux of the issue here. Dairy producers don't actually care about the animals because obviously if they did, they would stop abusing them and would transition out of this sinking ship of an industry that is dairy farming. What they really care about is making a profit. And that means that consumers have to be kept in the dark about the reality of the dairy industry, which is why these deceitful schemes and advertisements come about. False advertising is literally all they have left. Because once consumers realize they are being manipulated, once they realize, of course, that we don't need cow's milk to be healthy any more than we need dog's milk or rat's milk, once we realize that, and once we stop turning a blind eye to the needless suffering of these sentient individuals, well, the whole facade of dairy farming will come crashing down. Simply put, this advert and Allah's ever-changing schemes are just another ploy by the dairy industry to trick consumers into believing something that just simply isn't true. Dairy products aren't ethical, and acronyms are not a replacement for morals.